Welcome to Learnpedia, the ultimate JE and NEET prep tool currently being used by more than 20,000 aspirants. Let's see if you can answer this important question. If you think you got the answer, post it in the comment section below. To understand the concept behind this question, go ahead and watch the full video. So by now you know what is meant by tissue culture. Tissue culture is the technique of growing cells, tissues, organs or whole organism in vitro in glass or in artificial culture. Now need under a septic medium and under control condition. Now we were uh, talking about cellular totipotency. Now this is an interesting thing like uh, how we get the cellular totipotency. Each cell has a capacity to uh, regenerate into the entire plant. For example, the root of a carrot plant, you know carrot is a modified root. Now this is a modified root, this carrot itself, modified for the function of storage. Now if you simply keep this carrot head and it will grow into a new carrot plant. Now whatever that is jutting out is the roots, the small small root hairs. You just have to take the root of a carrot plant and then uh, grow it in the agar medium and then after that they, it will become a mass of cells. Now take the cells in suspension, special medium, then the cells start to divide and grow and then you get the embryo and then the embryo is now put in the solid medium and then transfer to the soil where the young plants develop. So then they will can be shifted onto the field where you will get the mature carrot plant. So everything happened because of the root of the plant. Now we are able to the root tissue, we are able to get the whole carrot plant. Now unlike animal cells, plant cells re-differentiate. Plant cells uh, have the ability to re-differentiate. That is uh, differentiate means instead of becoming a cell that is a cell without any specialized uh, formation, then we say it is an undifferentiated cell. Now here the root cell of the carrot, root cell is a differentiated cell that means it has already been modified to do the function of the root. So the root cell is differentiated. Now by growing by this tissue culture method, we are turning back the clock. So it becomes callous and again they are able to re-differentiate and form the entire plant. So this is the advantage of the plant cell. And uh, this tissue that we require for culture, the tissue which is used for tissue culture can be from any part of the plant, can be from a cotyledon or it can be the meristem, shoot meristem or root meristem or it can be the pollen or the excel or it can be the embryo or it can be the bud, floral bud. So it can be anything or it can even be the petiole of a leaf. So basically saying that any part of the plant can become, can be chosen to, to perform this tissue culture technique. Now the next one is, this is a callus and suspension culture. Now what do you mean by saying callus? Callus is you have an explant and that explant if grown in a culture medium, then the cells undergo de-differentiation cell culture medium. We have to be careful about the words culture medium. The cells undergo de-differentiation and that de-differentiation produces mass of cells, undifferentiated cells which is called as callus. So now the depending on the culture medium, the culture medium can be of uh, three kinds. Now one can be solid agar medium with all enriched with all the nutrient medium or jelly like medium and this is usually called as slants. Now this agar medium can be in a conical flask or in a petri dish. Then the third one is liquid medium, liquid broth. So this is the suspension medium. Suppose the cells which are taken out which have to be grown as single cells then we choose the suspension medium so that the cells do not clump up. They are constantly being rotated and then so the cells remain in the single cell stage. The semi-solid solid media are prepared by heating the nutrient medium with less than 1% agar or gelatin that is a basis. 
the nutrient solution contains 2 to 4 percent sugar and then vitamins minerals and growth regulators the growth regulators can be replaced by organic complexes like coconut milk banana pulp yeast extract etc now the important thing is this should be grown in aseptic medium aseptic medium means where you do not allow the bacteria the any kind of microorganism contamination so before that, uh, all the apparatus, everything, you know, forceps, needles and the nutrient medium are sterilized in an autoclave and then uh, inoculation chamber is disinfected with ultraviolet rays, explant is disinfected with antimicrobial chemicals, common disinfectants are dilute hydrochloric acid or chlorax or methiolate. So the commonly used uh, growth regulators are DAP which is otherwise called as benzyl amino purin and uh, this is uh, high in cytokine which uh, will induce the cell division and uh, the other one is which is indolastic acid is a type of auxin and the uh, next one is gibberellin which will induce flowering and this is actually if a plant is only growing and not flowering then the gibberellin is added which will induce the flowering of the plants then these are the growth regulators and then uh, the important thing about the maintenance of this what is the sterilization technique it is very very important when you are growing these tissues because of all the growth medium that uh, there are chances more than the callus the microbial growth will be very highly fast so we have to give a important uh, thing attention to the sterilization technique now the sterilization technique uh, is uh, based on the fact that uh, not only the culture which has to be kept in aseptic condition the transfer of the tissues, the apparatus that is used for the transfer of the tissues, everything that the whole place, inoculation chamber and the glassware that is being used for the tissue culture, everything has to be under sterile conditions. So the, what are the various methods? One is called as a dry heat treatment, that is one thing. So the next one is a dry heat treatment. Before the transfer, they will just heat the mouth of the test tube and the mouth of the conical flask so that there is a, during the transfer, they do not get any of these uh, microbial thing into that. And uh, then there is something called as a flame sterilization. Now the next one is the transfer is always done next to a flame. Autoclaving is basically a huge pressure cooker like uh, apparatus where the individual glassware are nicely washed and then uh, dried and then they are wrapped up in uh, and kept in this autoclave so that uh, all the bacterial spores everything will be killed and the autoclave uh, apparatus are then used. Then the next one is wiping with ethanol. Wiping the needles, wiping the glass lights, everything with ethanol. Wiping the glassware with ethanol. Then the next one is unsurface sterilization. The tabletop, even the air that is being led into the chamber where the uh, culture is being grown, even that is being filtered and that is being processed through special vents and finally when it reaches it is absolutely free of any kind of uh, microbes, surface sterilization. So these are the important thing that we should realize that is before we go into the actual nitty gritty of the different uh, ways of doing. Now in the different types of making use of the explant. Explant is the mother plant which is the donor of the tissues with the help of which we are able to do tissue culture methods. Now from the explant is just a plant where we can take the tissues from the apical meristem or the leaf or the root meristem. We can take any part of the tissue and then we can grow them the tissues in two different ways. One is the explant cultures are grown on agar medium. Now agar medium is a solid medium. Now if you take the tissue from the explant and put it in an agar medium, then it grows into callus. Callus is undifferentiated cells. So this undifferentiated mass of cells, so this is process is called as dedifferentiation. If suppose we take any part of the plant, then the cell would have differentiated. 
Suppose we take the meristematic uh, tissue, apical meristem or root meristem, then they will still be in the undifferentiated stage. So that will now divide and form what is called as a callus culture. Then this callus culture, we can choose whether we want a shoot regeneration or whether we want the embryoid regeneration. So, depending on that, it is only the nutrients that we add to the medium that is going to determine the plant hormones that we are adding. So, tissue culture in the callus, it can directly be taken and uh, transferred to the nutrient medium which will make it to develop the regeneration stage where it will form the shoot and then the shoot will form the root and then it will form the plantlet. And the next one is the explant that is a tissue can be instead of the solid medium can be transferred to the suspension medium or the liquid medium. And the liquid medium is kept at constant uh, temperature and is made to keep on rotating so that the liquid medium constantly rotates. So the cells are never allowed to come together. As a result, they remain as single cells and these cells are the undifferentiated cells. Then these cells are taken and as a result of lot of oxygen and nutrient that are available, the cells will grow more. That cells will divide and form mass of cells. And later on, if you want, the mass of cells can be taken. They can be shifted to a medium where they can be allowed to become the shoot or the root or whatever one desires. So everything depends on the hormones that are present in the medium. So now how do they do that? Suppose they are taking the tissue cultures can be that is a, whether it is a shoot or anther. If it is an anther then it will be haploid cells, embryoid culture. So callus is irregular, unorganized and undifferentiated mass of actively dividing cells. In suspension, the single cells or small groups of cells are suspended in constantly agitated liquid medium having 2,4-D. 2,4-D is a plant hormone. So that is present. Then with the passage of time, cells tissue biomass increases like I told you. And then the volume of the medium declines. So we have to keep changing them. And that is what is called as a subculture. Then after that, the cultures are regularly divided and transferred to containers having the fresh medium. Then callus and the suspension now can be made to form either the shoot or the root by transferring them onto a suitable medium. Sometimes for any genetic recombinant technique or for any mutation technique, the suspension culture is uh, beneficial because we can take these uh, suspension culture cells and uh, irradiate them or subject them to any kind of genetic experiment and the development of transgenic plant and isolation of protoplast all are possible with this suspension of culture. Then uh, the formation of plantlets, how will they form? The formation of organized structures that is from either from the callus or from this non-somatic embryo or plantlet anything, they are now allowed to grow into the plantlet. So the shoots are taken and then allowed to root and then they form the plantlet or they are allowed to form the embryo by simply changing the chemicals present in the medium and the somatic embryo now germinates and forms the plantlet. So uh, how do you get the callus to form the shoot? Now by introducing what is called as cytokinins. So the cytokinin help them to form the shoot. Now the other commonly called as the BAP. And then as the shoots become 2 to 3 cm and taken to another culture to in order to make them produce root, now they are transferred to what is called as NAA, naphthalene acetic acid or this is a kind of auxin. Now auxin promotes cell division again. Roots when the meristematic cells contain lot of auxin. So this one produces the roots. Then how do the embryo forms a somatic embryo? So this is by adding 2,4-D. Again 2,4-D embryoids can also develop from the somatic cells. And then they form the torpedo-like or a heart-shaped structure and they develop in plenty. So in one go we are able to get so many plantlets and this is especially useful for growing horticultural rare flower varieties 
like gerbera and the gladiolus and alfalfa and celery and so many other things so plantlets and then the plantlets are kept in greenhouses and uh, they are called as a mist chamber and there they are allowed to become mature these plantlets and after they have matured then they are uh, sown in the soil or kept in the soil for that is what is called as establishment in the field so that is the advantage of tissue culture so from one plant from a small mass of tissue we are able to get so many different numbers that is the numbers especially plants and this also gives us the freedom to do research on the cells so that we can produce newer varieties also so this is the advantage of uh, this one this uh, tissue culture method so this is also useful to obtain pathogen free clones especially for potato strawberry carnation and garlic and so this tissue culture method help us to get pathogen free clones and also multiply those plants which show slow vegetative propagation especially orchids and pineapple so this one produces many numbers of them so this all that we require is the apical merist and leaves the is cut from the shoot tip and then put in the culture medium hey there hope you understood the concept here's the solution to the question asked at the beginning found this video useful hit the like and share icons to enjoy more such videos learnpedia's je and neat prep tools contain more than 4000 videos and over 20000 solved examples these can be accessed online through our website or offline through an sd card or a pen drive to buy now visit www.learnpedia.in you can also experience a free demo of our product before buying